Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Seth Olive, and it's time for another edition of Much Brew About Nothing. And this week, we're heading to Modern to play some Hammer Time, but probably not with the hammer that you think. We're playing Hammer of Bogart in Hammer Time. So let's talk about this weird pseudo mono red prison style deck. Jump into a league. See it in action. All right, so here's our Bogart and Hammer Time deck. And, and the idea of this deck is pretty sweet. It's kind of like Mono Red Prison or Neo Mono Red Prison mixed with Burn of all things. So with our main deck, the idea of the deck is hopefully we play the stupid Monkey Ragavan on turn one. And then hopefully we hit our opponent on turn two to get to three mana to play a Blood Moon a turn early and just slow down the game. Like sometimes Blood Moon just beats the opponent. Other times it just buys us a ton of time because our plan for winning the game is to burn our our opponent out. We got Seal of Fire, we got Lightning Bolt, but mostly with our namesake Hammer of Bogardin, a card that I honestly forgot was even legal in modern. So Hammer of Bogardin is a three mana sorcery speed lightning bolt, but you can pay five mana during your upkeep to return it to your hand. So for the low, low cost of eight mana, uh, you can be dealing three damage every single turn. Now you can split it up, you can do five mana one turn and then three the next turn or whatever, but it's essentially a ridiculously expensive but repeatable lightning bolt. But the idea of the deck is, well, if we lock our opponent with Blood Moon, it's gonna buy us a lot of time to just burn our opponent out of the game with the hammer. And we can also use it to snipe down creatures. So if something slips through the Blood Moon, we can hopefully bolt it out of the game with Hammer Bogardin and then go back to hitting face. We also have traditional mono red prison finisher, Chandra Torture Defiance, which is just a really good planeswalker. It can come down early with the treasures from Ragavan. It deals damage, it rushes ultimate, it kills things. It does everything we wanna do. Otherwise, we got a bunch of card filtering. Season Pyromancer, Reckless Impulse, keeps us churning through our deck. Relic, kind of a cantrip that also hates on Graveyard. A little bit awkward in our deck because like Season Pyromancer likes to be in the Graveyard. Hammer of Bogardin likes to be in the Graveyard. So we gotta try to get the timing right, but it is really good in certain matchups. As far as the mana base, we get a lot of value out of non-basic lands. We got eight MDFCs, both Burn Spells, Shatter Skull, Smashing, Spike Field Hazard. Sinka is good at forcing Ragavan through blockers, giving it First Strike. Blast Zone for removal, Den of the Bugbear, another way to close out the game, some mountains. And then the side Sideboard is where we start to look like basically free win red or mono red prison. We got our chalice of the voids. We got our ensnaring bridges. We got ratchet bombs to deal with Urza's saga tokens. We got pillage to deal with Tron lands and other non-basic lands. So the idea is in game one, we're like this really weird blood moony pseudo prison burn deck. But then in games two and three, we can go full on mono red prison. Like old school, haven't seen it since Simeon Spirit Guide was banned. One of my favorite decks in the history of modern, bringing the chalices, bringing the bridges, we still got the Chandra's, we can sideboard out some of our whatever one drop stuff that gets hit by Chalice and hopefully just kind of lock our opponent and still have an extra finisher in Hammer of Bogardin. If we can get Chalice down and Ensnaring Bridge down and Blood Moon down, that's gonna buy us a ridiculous amount of time. And even though Hammer of Bogardin caused an insane amount of mana, if we can buy 10 turns, 20 turns with our lock pieces, we should be able to just burn our opponent out of the game with the hammer. So that is Bogardin Hammer time for modern. That's our Mudger Brew deck for this week. So let's jump into a league, see the deck in action. Is Bogart and Hammer the real hammer of modern? Let's find out. Thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoy it. And I'll be back in a bit with a wrap up. Do you need some new Innistrad Crimson Vow cards? Well, you can get them all from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, by heading over to cardkingdom.com slash MTG Goldfish and even get a free MTG Goldfish sticker. Just let them know you want one in your order notes and they will hook you up. Much brew about nothing time. We are playing Hammer Time, but not the one you're used to. <laughs> we are playing Bogard in Hammer Time. A uh, kind of a, I don't even know, mono red, mono red something deck. Opponent, Ragavan, sure. Well, unfortunately, we're probably gonna lose the Ragavan War because our opponent is on the play. So they get to kill our Ragavan and attack and make treasures when we we don't have that option. And so that's uh that's pretty bad news. Getting the the play draw beat down here. Opponent, Ragavan hits us, treasure, relic. Oh, and this turn isn't gonna be very good unless we draw something. We're like reckless impulsing. The hammer's really good late game, not good at killing a Ragavan on turn two. Inquisition. Well, there goes our Reckless Impulse, or maybe our Seasoned Pyromancer. Oh, we had the Monkey too, and we're still gonna lose the Monkey War. That's why you don't lose the die roll. <laughs> Opponent, I mean, I assume they take, yeah, Seasoned Pyromancer. Sure, removal, please. 
Den of the Bugbear. Well, we will play it and we will Reckless Impulse. And okay, well, that's stuff that can technically maybe kill a monkey next turn. Although, oh, even two monkey hits is pretty brutal. So opponent gets an extra mana, maybe an extra card. Then we have to hope we dodge a counter spell and then maybe we deal with a one drop opponent. Steam vents tapped, passes, um, blast zone, bolt the monkey, the opponent, counters. Well, we will play our monkey. Not going to dash it, pass the turn. The opponent, two cards in hand for the moment, three now. Can we stop a single Ragavan? <laughs> <laughs> is it possible to stop getting hit by the stupid monkey? That is the question about it. Island. The answer is no. Snapcaster for drown in the lock to kill our Ragavan. Or for terminate to kill our Ragavan. And get in with the Ragavan. And opponent gets some mana, steals a card. It's a Shatter Skull smashing. We draw Blood Moon. But there's a bunch of treasures that make it a lot less helpful. Well... We will hammer time the Ragavan. All right. <laughs> this is one of those games that just shows how crazy Ragavan is. Like our opponent just spent the entire game trying to snowball the Ragavan and it and it worked. <laughs> like it actually ended up working that they were just able, they uh, counter a counter kill, all these treasures, give them mana. They get another Ragavan, of course. They dashed the Ragavan this time. They get in, they get another, oh my goodness, it never. It never ends. Opponent, even more treasures. Steals a land that we actually kind of wanted. Picks up the Ragavad. We draw. Relic of Progenitus, not super good. Well, we will Reckless Impulse. Blast Zone. You know what? Maybe we start trying to dash Ragavad. Dash Ragavad. Go to combat. Well, opponent drew an answer. Yeah, kills our Ragavad. Untaps. Dash is Ragavad. <laughs> Goes to combat, it says. Down to set. Wow, my goodness. Ragavan is the. Oh my god, and they hit a Chandra. Now we are officially dead. <sighs> and that is exactly why you don't lose a die roll in a Ragavan mirror. That was like max monkey snowball. Pillage is bad, and snaring bridge is probably bad. Blood Moon's actually good if we can get it down before getting snowballed. This deck I feel like is almost built to not get Ragavan snowballed. <laughs> And we just got Ragavan snowballed. Like, I feel like that is the, that is like the, the number one goal of our deck is don't let Ragavan snowball us. And it still happened. Like, kills Ragavan, kills Ragavan, kills Ragavan, kills Ragavan, kills Ragavan. Like, we got 20 cards that are specifically good at killing Ragavan. And we still, we, we still couldn't stop it. We still couldn't stop it. Well, we get to play first. Let's see if we can have the turn one monkey this time. Uh, all right. Well, we're going to keep it. Our turn to try to snowball the Ragavan. Uh, Den of the Bugbear, Ragavan, pass the turn. Boon it, untaps. Steam vents, untapped. And, oh, all right. Gonna kill the Ragavan during our turn, apparently. Uh, well, go to combat. Attack with the monkey. Do we get in a hit? Seems unlikely. Opponent has unholy heat. Well, we will shatter a skull smashing, tapped. Pass the turn. Boon it, untaps. Blue to Delta, and passes. Shatter is called smashing. Tapped past the turn. All right, well, we'll see. Getting down the Chandra would be sweet. Gonna have to dodge counters and discard. The Spike Field Hazard does stop a Ragavan. Opponent tap land and passes. We draw. Seal of Fire. Play Blast Zone. Play, oh, we'd love to get down Chandra, but play Seal of Fire and pass the turn. I mean, that is, that is monkey protection. Opponent untaps. Swamp passes lightning bolt. Well, we will play the spike field hazard. And I mean, we're just going to start hammering away, I guess. Hammer your face. Pass the turn. Pwn it out of 15. <laughs> Roughly as good as putting a Colossus Hammer on a creature on turn two. <laughs> More or less the same power level. Pwn it cracks polluted delta. It's an island. Untaps. Raka Vaughn. Well, I mean, we are going to kill it with a seal of fire. Opponent passes. <clears throat> oh, we really want this Chandra, but our opponent's definitely representing a counter spell. Let's play Ratchet Bomb. Pass the turn. Opponent. Yeah, pretty sure our opponent just has counter spell. If they ever tap down, then we can try to get down Chandra. Dashes Ragavan. We will bolt it. So opponent currently out monkeying us. 
lets it go. So opponent's gonna leave up this counter forever, apparently. Well, charge counter on, ratchet bomb, untap. Get back a hammer. Mountain, go. Opponent untaps. Six cards in hand, that is a lot. Gets Allurus. Okay, we untap, we draw. Reckless Impulse, well, might as well cast it. Dash a monkey, go to combat, attack. And all right, there's the Unholy Heat. Well, we will play a Ratchet Bomb. Pass the turn, about it untap. So here comes Allurus to get back the Ragavans. Inquisition, all right, can take a hammer, sure. Maybe our opponent can't play it. Ex okay, they're just gonna draw cards. Expressive iteration to draw some cards. So no Luris yet. Finds a bobble, plays the bobble. Cracks the bobble. So it's actually a, a kind of close game. Charge up the ratchet bomb, charge up the ratchet bomb. Untap, opponent gets to draw. Get back the hammer. Chandra, all right, well next turn we're gonna start casting Chandra's, I think. So we can deal with a Ragavan. Runs out of Snapcaster, sure. So we can deal with the Ragavan. I mean, the hammers are kind of doing work. Opponent plays a land, goes to combat, gonna hit us for two, sure. I'll charge up the Ratchet Bomb. So we got three for Loris and one for Ragavan. We draw a mountain, we'll play the mountain. Hammer, Snapcaster. Wow, opponent counters. Well, we will hammer Snapcaster. I mean, I guess we can just keep doing this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, okay, so we got through multiple counters, which is nice. Getting those out of our opponent's hand eventually. Pass the turn. We're almost to the point where we can get back and cast hammer in the same turn, which is sweet. We got the lures pretty well covered. We're still at 16. Opponent hits us. Down to 16. Opponent passes. Get back a hammer. Draw land for hammer? Draw another hammer. Well, pass the turn. <laughs> <laughs> opponent, just keep hammering. Colgan's command's annoying. Oh, opponent has Colgan's command and gets back the, who gets back the Ragavan. The monkeys never end. And opponent still has six cards in hand. No matter how many cards we get countered, our opponent just always has six in hand. Opponent, Inquisition to take a hammer and passes. Now we untap, we draw, play a Chandra. Opponent, do you have another counter? Yes, of course. Play the land. Try to kill the Snapcaster. Do you have a no? Okay, we, we resolved a spell. A, re a spell was resolved. <sighs> but this means that Luris and Ragavan return. Bobble. I do not know how our opponent never runs out of cards. I don't know how it's possible. How is it possible that our opponent just always has a handful of cards? I mean, I guess it's Luris and the Bobbles and the expressive iterations. They just have a ton of, a ton of redraws. Luris. Will we ever be able to kill the Luris? Replays a bobble. Opponent. Passing. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess we're gonna start charging up the ratchet bomb now. Opponent gets to draw a card. We draw. Not getting back the hammer this turn. Spike field hazard. Well, play Chandra. Do you have another counter? Cracks the bobble. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> Of course. All right. So opponent does have another counter. Oh my God. All right. So opponent just never, never, ever, ever runs out of counters. Untaps. Oh, we are, we are grinding and fighting and trying, but our opponent just, they always have it. They always have it. Snapcaster for Coligan's command to blow up the ratchet bomb. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of disappointed that we're losing to this deck because I feel like this is supposed to be the deck that we're most likely to be able to beat, or at least monkey decks in general. We just have not really had any luck with the, the plan of resolving spells on occasion. Opponent, Oligan's command. Well, we get to blow up the Snapcaster. So I think finally, after 17 counters, I think we finally ran our opponent out of counter spells. Opponent gets to get in with the Lurus. Hit us, down to 11. Plays the Ragavan. Well, we get to kill the Ragavan. Untap. Get back a hammer. Hammer the Luris. All right. Well, it wasn't pretty, it wasn't easy, but for now, the board is clear. Opponent, Bobble. If this is like Unearth Luris, oh no, that would be so bad. Opponent takes a peek. Dash is Ragavan. Oh, please don't hit something good. All right, more monkeys. Opponent steals. Uh, 
Like, what are we supposed to do about that? <laughs> We've spent this entire game playing not to get hit by Ragavan, and that happened in the first match too. Like, we did a really good job of fighting this Ragavan battle, and then our opponent draws even more Ragavans, and then the Ragavan, for the second game in a row, manages to steal a Chandra that we just we can't we can't deal with like it just brutally 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 brutalizes us well we will dash a ragavan Sinka. i mean now we're on the prey they don't have removal because the chandra kills us den of the bugbear go to combat gonna attack the chandra make a token attack the chandra and opponent has a snapcaster to keep the chandra alive <sighs> <laughs> kills the den of the bugbear chandra goes to two yeah wow well i will say that is pretty brutally bad luck <laughs> pretty brutally bad luck that our opponent would twice in a row steal chandras with their one monkey hit that is like wow the odds of a chandra there's four chandras in our deck and yeah our opponent wins there's four chandras in our deck yeah fair enough so there's four Chandras in our deck, four out of 60. So there's a there's a 6% chance to eh, seven. Let's round up to seven. 7% chance that our opponent hits a Chandra. And uh, they did it both games in a row. Stupid monkeys. Much brew about nothing time. We are hammer timing in uh, in modern with some Bogard in hammer time. And well, we'll see. No companion for our opponent. We got a, a stupid monkey. Let's say it would be sweet if one time, just one time we like getting a, get in a monkey hit. Today may not be the day, but someday, someday, somehow. Well, we will. Down to the bugbear, stupid monkey, go. I mean, this hand really needs some Ragavan hits because otherwise it's not super good. A it undeps island well odds of a ragavan hit increasing another okay monkey monkey flood i'll go to combat hit you with the ragavan steal a karn the great creator oh i wish we could cast that uh well we will play a mountain relic of progenitus pass the turn so our opponent's probably playing like blue tron i guess we actually have a ton of artifacts in our sideboard like that karn would actually have been great passes Go to combat, attack with the monkey. Opponent bounces the monkey, okay. Replay the monkey. Play a blast zone past the turn. Opponent, steam vents, untapped. Oh, so this is like a rhino deck, apparently. Opponent passes. Well, go to combat, attack with the monkey. Please let us get in a hit, opponent. <sighs> Cascades into rhinos. <laughs> And we're dead. <laughs> All right. Well, we do have sideboard cards for this. We do have a plan. Uh, it is not a plan that's helping us right now at the moment, though. Opponent gets to block the monkey with a rhino. Yep. Uh, so we have to shatter skull smashing. Actually, I guess we got to play the land. Play the land. Shatter skull smashing. Kill the rhino, pass the turn. But that's still a 4-4 four, four trample hanging out. A bonnet, used to combat, hits us for four. Yeah, we don't really have an answer to that. Gets it, hits us. Wow, the monkey wasn't stupid enough, does not attack for some reason. Okay, plays a land, cracks the land. So that means they probably have a Karn that they're trying to defend. Yeah, shuts down our artifacts and Tutors up, like one battle coding. No, Char Shardless Agent for more rhinos. Den of the Bugbear. Well, I mean, we will Reckless Impulse. We will Shatter Skull Smashing, untapped. We will Season Pyromancer to discard a couple cards. But we don't have an answer for another set of rhinos here. Pass the turn. Yeah, we, we just can't beat rhinos take two is the issue. But like I said, we do have ratchet bombs and chalices in our sideboard. So we we have a plan for this matchup. Whether or not it's going to be enough, that is up for debate. The opponent goes to combat, going to attack. I mean, we're going to block with everything. If our opponent has a removal spell to keep the rhino alive, then sure. But we just, we really don't have a another choice here. We're, we're just so far behind with another set of rhinos coming that we got to do whatever we can to kill a rhino because we know Shardless Agent is about to make more rhinos and this Karn is about to tutor again. 
gemstone caverns opponent play your silly rhinos i wonder this deck's interesting because it's got all the prison pieces in the sideboard i wonder if it's better to have the prison pieces in the main deck or to have karn in the main deck so at least we can get the prison pieces from the sideboard maybe it would still be too slow but like this is a matchup where i don't think our main deck has a very realistic shot of beating rhinos but our sideboard has a lot of just all stars like some of the best possible cards uh for this matchup are are in our sideboard but i feel like i don't know i feel like auto losing game one and then bringing in the good cards in game two uh in game three maybe that's enough like maybe the sideboard haymakers are are gonna be enough either way but we'll have to see we'll see how it plays out but that's something i'm wondering like oh boy maybe like maybe we want the chalices over the relics or whatever opponent passes we draw spike field hazard well i mean i think it's about scoop time reckless impulse Lightning Bolt Blast Zone. All right, well, let's see if the sideboard cards are enough. So like I said, we got really good ones for this matchup. Chalice, great. Ratchet Bomb, good. Ensnaring Bridge, probably coming in. Relics, not good. Seal of Fires, not good. Um, And what else is not great? We can probably go down like a couple of hammers. Even like Lightning Bolt's not very good. Lightning Bolt doesn't kill a Rhino. <laughs> it, can, it can hit a Karn, I guess, but it doesn't hit a Rhino. Maybe we can go down a land. Let's go down a land and keep a bolt. Go down a spike field hazard. I mean, we brought in 11 sideboard cards that should be really good in this matchup. Is it enough to shift the math? Well, we got a ratchet bomb. A ratchet bomb is good. That can that can sweep up some Rhinos. Shatter Skull Smashing, tap, go. And then we'll see. Opponent, breeding pool, tapped. We draw chalice. That is also good. Now, den of the bugbear. I almost don't know if we want a reckless impulse here. I think we play ratchet bomb, play chalice on zero. Do we have a force of negation? All right, pass the turn. There's the sideboard cards. Are they going to stop the rhinos? Opponent. It feels like our opponent does have a force of negation. I don't know why else they'd be thinking about that chalice. It feels like they got it and they decided it wasn't worth it, which is kind of scary because that is like our best card for our opponents, uh, for our opponent's deck. Like that is the number one card about it. Uh, getting down this blood moon would be sweet. Wooded foothills. Opponent passes. Well, let's reckless impulse. Mountain monkey. Yeah. I mean, we have multiple answers for the for the rhinos, which is nice. Opponent's got to get rid of the chalice to even resolve that, but then the ratchet bomb can sweep them up and the ensnaring bridge is coming. Eventually the blood moon could be good. Little worried about Karn. Opponent. Forest. And passes. I mean, so we're definitely attacking with Ragavan. First thing. Go to combat. Get in with the stupid monkey. Opponent. Are they cascading into the chalice? Uh, Prismari command, okay. Well, I mean, that is a pretty good answer. Well, we will blast zone in snaring bridge. Does this eat the force of negation? All right, it does. Opponent, force of negation. All right, well, we'll see. Opponent untaps triome and passes. We will play a blood moon. Do you have another force of negation? Okay, floats a mana. Well, play Den of the Bugbear. Pass the turn. Okay, bounces a Blood Moon. <laughs> well, opponent is not giving up. They are not giving up, that's for sure. Opponent untaps. They are not making it easy for us to lock them out of this game. Here comes the Karn. Yup. Good news is Den of the Bugbear can just kill it if it ticks down. If it ticks up, then it's not doing anything. All right, so opponent's gonna tutor. For what? Batter Skull. All right, opponent passes. Well, we need to, we need to kill the Karn. So Den of the Bugbear, go to combat, kill the Karn, hit our opponent for a one. And are we playing the spike field hazard? Yeah, I think so. Actually, no, we're gonna hold on to it. I think that's fine. Playing it lets us play two three drops next turn, but we gotta play the Chandra first anyway, because we don't wanna discard it to season Pyromancer, and it can snipe a Brazen Borrower. Opponent, land. So if our opponent plays Batter Skull, we can't kill the Batter Skull itself, but we can deal with the Germ. Batter Skull, sure. And passing. Play the Mountain, play Chandra. Snipe the Germ. Hit you for one. Okay. I mean, we're doing it. So far, 
<laughs> so far, we haven't gotten Rhino out of the game, which is good news. Blood Moon's looking a little less effective now. I mean, it still does something, but our opponent does have a couple basics, so it's not going to just straight up beat them. Opponent. Still think we got to leave the Ratchet Bomb on, on zero. That's our that's our only defense to a, <laughs> to a set of Rhinos at the moment. Opponent. Passing. Well, let's take up Chandra for mana. Play Blood Moon. Uh, we can't let our opponent brazen bar we're an equipped batter skull so this is going to force our opponent either to answer the blood moon or to cast the brazen bar or now and if they cast it now we can just spike field hazard it opponent lets it go uh well we will play a ratchet bomb number two go to combat attack you not going to season pyromancer yet we're gonna we're gonna leave up the spike field hazard which is kind of kind of relevant here i mean this is this is kind of working it's kind of working <laughs> slowly but it's kind of working hit you with the goblin about it down to 15. Well, the game's definitely seen easier once we get our sideboard cards in in this matchup for sure. Let's see what our opponent does here. Another Prismari command. All right. Kills a Ratchet Bomb. Kills a Chandra. That is a bit annoying. Opponent untaps. Another Chalice on zero would be fine. Opponent passing. We draw. Chalice. Well, all right. Chalice on zero. Violent Outburst. I mean, this is fine, right? So they're going to make Rhinos, but then we just Ratchet Bomb the Rhinos. We lose a token, but all right, sure. So there's the Rhinos. Kill the Rhinos. Get the Chalice. Play Spikefield Cave. Season Pyromancer. Draw a couple cards. Dash a Ragavan. Go to combat. Hit you with a monkey. Ooh, all right. Actually connects. We steal. Fire Ice. I mean, drawing a card seems worth it. All right, pass the turn. Pick up the monkey. Well, now the only thing we're really worried about is our opponent getting this batter skull going because we don't currently have a way to deal with it, especially on another creature. That's the that's the worst. The blood moons are kind of helping us, though. Like our opponent can't raise a bar at the moment. Opponent passing. We draw land. Well, blood moon number two, more protection. Blast zone dash a monkey. Go to combat attack you. Oh, my God. OK. And they, oh. oh no, that's more rhinos. Wow. And there goes our board and there goes our monkey and batter skull equips. And yeah, I mean, now we're, now we're dead again. That was brutal. Huh. Well, that's the problem I think with playing all the, all the cards that are good in these matchups in the sideboard is even with the sideboard cards, the other decks have plans for them. So you're not guaranteed to win. It's not like, oh, I bring in chalices and I'm 100% to win. As you can see there, like we've had chalices, we've had, uh, <laughs> We've had ratchet bombs. We've had what we need and and it's still not going to be enough. And uh, now the only reason we're staying in this game is technically we could draw a ratchet bomb and reset the rhinos again. But even if that happens, our opponent's going to be up to I mean, we're dropping to eight. Our opponent's going to infinite. Yeah, what can you do? What can you do? We even drew the sideboard cards and still hmm, maybe ratchet bomb land. Oh, so far, this deck has not been quite as good as the real hammer time. I will say much move about nothing time. We are playing the other hammer time. <laughs> Bogart in hammer time. And uh, so far, Bogart in hammer time. Not a uh, not quite as good as real hammer time. Power level a little, a little less, I would say. Just a just a smidge. Smidge light opponent doing a bit of mulliganing. So, I mean, this hand, it's fine. We got a Chandra. We got some removal. No. No stupid monkey to get things started, but I don't think we can just mulligan for monkey. Oh, down to five. Tron, copy Tron. Well, that means we need to draw Blood Moon. Assuming it really is Tron, which we'll see. I mean, other decks mull to five on occasion, but what are you up to, opponent? Show us that Urza's Tower. Eh, close. Urza Saga. Urza Saga on turn one's not very good. Not as good, because you don't get the tokens out of it. I mean, maybe it's hammer time. Uh, there's other decks that mulligan pretty aggressively to... Uh, to try to find their combos. That's a blood moon. Not coming down until turn three, but, um, well, Sinka and I guess Relic for redraw purposes past the turn. Opponent takes up their Saga. Oh, it's Primeval Titan deck. Okay. Abriel Grazer. I guess the question's gonna be, is this blood moon even fast enough? Opponent passes. Blast zone past the turn. Okay, I mean, Blood Moon next turn is great if we're alive. Opponent, Saga goes off. Gets an amulet. Adds mana. Oh, makes a construct, okay. Okay, so I guess that's fine. 
makes a construct, gets an amulet, plays another saga. I mean, the good news is this Blood Moon's gonna be a ridiculously huge blowout. So we get to bolt the construct, untap. This is a great Blood Moon, play a mountain. Blood Moon, Ooh, kill the bounce land, kill the saga. And now we might be in business. Opponent plays a mountain, passes. Well, play a land, Chandra, tick it up. Hit ya. An opponent, okay. Oh, Blood Moon power, Blood Moon power. Well, it's good to know that our old friend Blood Moon can still get the job done sometimes. This matchup, pillage in for sure. Maybe Ratchet Bomb? Like Ratchet Bomb seems somewhat appealing. What seems unappealing? Relic doesn't do anything. We can probably go down some of the random burn. Like Seal of Fire, what's that gonna kill? Maybe an Azusa? I guess our burn spells can combine together to kill something. Thing, but Chalice, probably not enough. I feel like Ratchet Bomb is probably worth it. Ratchet Bomb can clear off, I also get on Seal of Fire. Ratchet Bomb can clear away a bunch of Saga tokens. Can also take up once and get rid of, get rid of an amulet. And then maybe we go down like two hammers and bring in two bridges. Yeah, try it like that. I mean, the only downside is our deck isn't very good at killing creatures with toughness higher than three. Lots of hammers, but not enough lands. No blood moon, no monkey. Opponent's keeping seven. Like the ratchet bomb's decent. Yeah, I think we try it. I don't think we want to go to five. Well, we'll see. Opponent wins up teeth, cracks it. Benny, our opponent gets a plant of uh, forest area and expedition map, sure. Pillage is not the worst. We still need to draw another land, but pillage can be good, opponent. I mean, we can take ratchet, oh boy, amulet in hand. Oh, I can see why your opponent kept this. <laughs> I can see why they kept it. Opponent picks up the forest, passes. Well, blast zone and ratchet bomb. Go, land please. Not actually sure this is gonna be fast enough. Opponent cracks the map, gets a saga. Bounce land, all right. Uh, let's see if we're facing down a primeval titan this turn. They need extra land drops to go off this turn. Okay, has a foundation breaker. I mean, that's pretty bad for us. Well, we really wanna land. Really, really, really. Opponent, really, really, really. A land for this pillage gives us some hope, plays the forest. Red source untapped? No, uh-oh. Well, we might be dying with two pillages in hand. Okay, opponent untaps with the amulet. Technically a mana short from playing a Titan without extra help. I mean, in our dream world, we dodge the Titan, kill the amulet with a ratchet bob, and then kill, hmm, okay. Well, that's not ideal. Karn, sure, takes down, gets liquid metal coating. Okay, land, maybe? There's the land. Well, I mean, I think what we gotta do is bolt the Karn. This is a little slower than we were hoping. Bolt the Karn to turn on the ratchet bomb, to blow up the amulet. Gotta do it now before the land drops come. Play them out and pass the turn. All right, no more Karns, please, no more Karns. Opponent passes. If we can start pillaging lands, it's anyone's, anyone's game. Blood Moon would also still be pretty good. Opponent, a second Karn would be very troubling. Already having a hard time hitting our land drops. If our opponent can start eating our lands, it's gonna be hard to do anything. Growth chamber, sure. Thankfully, no amulet. Opponent passes, land maybe? Ensnaring bridge, well, pillage, blow up land, pass the turn. Still wouldn't mind just hitting more lands or blood moon. Would also accept a blood moon. I mean, we're doing a good job of slowing down the amulet titan deck. Summoner's pact. Okay, getting what, Dryad? Dryad of the Ilseen Grove. Wait, do we get to win? Does this pillage win us a game? Vesuva, oh my God, I think it does. I think we can pillage and they can't pay for the pact. <laughs> yes, the greatest kind of win. Pillage your bounce land, pass the turn. Would you like to pay the four opponent? <laughs> is no, oh, I think that might be one of my favorite ways to win a game of Modern is to, <laughs> to make someone lose to their own pack is just so satisfying. <laughs> yes, 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 that was a good one. That was a good one and uh, well, that might be the matchup where our deck shines. Oh, we got him good that time. No hammering involved, but uh, pillaging was pretty solid. Sweet, sweet. Much brew about nothing time. We are playing some hammer time, but not the one that you think. We're playing a Bogardin hammer time. I 
guess we keep this. Uh, I mean, a little bit heavy on the tap lands, but we got a lot of removal and we got a stupid monkey. Mountain, please don't monkey us. Goblin guide, all right. Untap land would be the best. Like just show us a mountain, please. No, blood moon. Blood moon is not the best. Spike field hazard, yeah. Ooh, we might get a little. So we lost the die roll, we got double, double tap land, not ideal. Opponent gets in, hits us. All right, there's an untap land that is good. Down to 16. Battle cry goblin. All right, so opponent's playing eight whack. Well, play the land. Blood moon's basically a dead card. Let's seal a fire. Kill the battle cry goblin. Pass the turn. So our plan, I think, is just to kill everything. <laughs> I think that's our main goal here. Kill as much as possible. Opponent. Bushwhacker, no kicker. And then bushwhacker, kicker. Okay, well that's fine. So we're gonna take four, but we get to bolt the goblin guide. Wait till it attacks in case we get a, a freebie land. Uh, no, spike field hazard. Yeah, our deck is not very good at getting the free lands because we have so many MDFCs. So kill the goblin guide. Spike field hazard isn't the worst though. Like that actually kills something here. We drop to 12. We spike field hazard the bushwhacker. We spike field cave past the turn, leave up the bolt. So we don't really want this blood moon. Blood moon does literally nothing. Opponent, combat. Yeah, I think we take one. All right, opponent passes. Play him out and, um, you know what? I actually think we just, hammer time. Oh wait, the bushwhacker past the turn. And I kind of like where we are now. Our opponent's flooding a bit. Battle cry goblin and a bushwhacker, but we get to bolt the battle cry goblin. Opponents out of cards, officially. Hits us down to nine. Main thing we're worried about is goblin grenades. Opponent passes. Relic doesn't do much. Well, let's reckless impulse. Shatter is called smashing tapped. Dash Ragavan or play it as a blocker. We probably dash it this turn, do we? You know what? I think we just played as blocker and then play Relic of Progenitus. Not playing the Blood Moon, it doesn't do anything. Well, okay, stupid monkey on defense. Better than not having a stupid monkey on defense. Opponent, combat, attacks. Well, I mean, we are going to block. All right, well, get the hammer back. Blast zone and pass the turn. So now we can, uh, we can crack this Relic. Legion Loyalist, okay. It's us down to eight. We wanna crack the relic when we don't have a, well, there's a goblin grenade. So we're at three. That is not a high life total. We draw a bolt. Sketchy, please don't bolt us. We gotta deal damage somehow. Uh, play a blast zone. One, two, three, four, down to the bugbear. Hit ya for four. Pass the turn, can we race? Can we race damage coming off the top of the library? Opponent untaps, passes. That scares me a bit. Another goblin grenade is super bad for us. One, two, three, four. Play Chandra, take it up, hit you to 14. Get in with a goblin, hit you to 13. Pass the turn. Oh, please not goblin, goblin grenade. Oh, opponent, pump fakes. Also dead to a lightning bolt. Three is a scary life total. Battle cry goblin. Okay, well, we survive. Lightning bolt, not dead yet. Opponent passes. Smashing. Not one, two, three, four, den of the bugbear. Actually, do we take up Chandra first? Yeah, take up Chandra. Dash Raghavan, den of the bugbear. Go to combat, hit ya. Treasure, steel pile driver. Shatter Skull Smashing tapped. Pass the, this is it, this is it. Can we survive this turn? Opponent untapped. So we got a blocker back in case our opponent hastes. Oh, no bolts, no bolts, please. Opponent thinking, counting, mountain. Opponent has flooded a bit. Wow, oh boy. Eight whack is such, or 12 whack is such a scary matchup. There's just so much damage that can come out of nowhere. Opponent passes. I think we're good now though. If we're not dying this turn, we should be able to kill our opponent here. Opponent passes. We draw a mountain. I'll play the mountain. Dash the Ragavan. And opponent scoops it up. Ooh. <sighs> okay, we can breathe. We can breathe again. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Blood Moon, probably the worst card ever in this matchup. Relic does nothing, so we're going down those. Oh, ratchet bombs in, chalice 
in. And then I guess we just keep all of our removal and hope for the best. This doesn't feel like a great Raghavan matchup, although as we saw there, if we can kill stuff and get the blockers out of the way, maybe it's fine. The question is, would bridge be worth it? If we can get fully empty handed, bridge does do something. We don't have any anger of the gods. Ratchet bomb is as close as we get to bridge or not to bridge. That is the question. Uh, still not sure. It feels slow. There is probably answers to some extent in the sideboard. Ah, oh, it's probably just too slow, isn't it? What else do we have that's bad? Anything? Maybe the monkeys. Go down a monkey for a bridge. They just have so many blockers. It just does seem hard to get in with Raghavan. I mean, maybe like one, all right, two bridges. Trim a monkey, trim a hammer. Two bridges, opponents on the play, 12 whacking us. Show us that removal. We'll take as much removal as possible. I mean, we're going to keep this. We got to hit a land. That is the TLDR. We need the land to get to the ratchet bombs to survive the onslaught of 12 whack. Oh boy. So many reckless impulses. Well, Raghavan, go. Raghavan getting in a hit to get a treasure would also work. Probably not the matchup to draw every reckless impulse opponent. Battle cry goblin. Grows a foundry street. Are they attacking? Yes. All right. Well, we take it. We draw. A land, okay. In that case, I think we just attack. And if our opponent trades with Battle Cry, we're perfectly fine with that. If they don't, then we can Bolt plus Ratchet Bomb. Ragavan is an absurd magic card. I feel a little bad. I think Ragavan costs more than our opponent's entire deck. Well, all right. Sends our opponent to that. We're going to get down a Ratchet Bomb. Start taking it up. Ones and twos are the sweet spots for the Ratchet Bomb's Castle Embereth. Well, how much damage can our opponent hit us for this turn? Dragon's Claw. Okay, sure. That's fine. Uh, We're not really a... Uh, we're not really an aggro deck. Like we're more, of, we're honestly more of a controller prison deck. Ratchet bomb. Well, in that case, we need to reckless impulse. See if we can hit a land. Opponent's gonna gain a bunch of life. Land is super necessary here. Ouch. Past the turn, I guess. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't good. <laughs> that was not good at all. Opponent plays a land. We have benefited a bit from our opponent flooding out. I will say. That is the nightmare with, with a whack deck is you draw too many lands and it goes poorly. Opponent gets in. If they pump, then I think, yeah, let's just, I mean, that's not insane value, but sure. Kill your thing, save as much life as possible. Opponent passes, we draw not a land. All right, let's try this again, Reckless Impulse. There's gotta be a land somewhere in the top of our deck, right? It's, there's gotta be. Maybe this is too greedy and we should just dash the monkey. Okay, well, <laughs> Sure, Chalice on zero. Didn't work out exactly the way we had planned. <laughs> Not quite, but uh, I think we're okay-ish still. Mog Fanatic. Do they have a whack? Another Dragon's Claw. So opponent's gaining all the life. Legion Loyalist, sure. Well, it's gonna take us a while to kill our opponent, I think. But they're out of cards and we're still at 15, 16 even. Opponent gets in, hits us. Down to 16. Well, play the land. Gotta play the hammer because we don't want to lose it. Opponent up to 27. Gonna be one of those kind of matches past the turn. I mean, we're getting to the point where we actually do want to get chalices locked in. Like, chalice on two shuts down the wax, which is huge. Chalice on one shuts down the burn. Opponent, Mog Fanatic. It's us. 15. No pumping. Foundry Street Denizen. Sure. Uh, all right, untap, bridge. That's a, a minute away from being helpful. Well, all right, reckless impulse. <laughs> Pwn it up to 31. There's some lands. I'll play a blast zone. Ratchet bomb. Pass the turn. I wonder if we gotta blow up the, do we have to blow up the dragon's claws? Ooh, awkward timing for the whack. All right, well, I think what we do is we kill the bushwhacker, take our beats, and then we can ratchet bomb away the one drops. We might have to put chalice on one. Opponent it hits us. Oh, it wasn't surged anyway. All right, that makes it a little better. I'll play the land. Ratchet bomb. How do we lose this game? So one is the burn, two is the wax. I think we, I think we chalice on one. This does lock out some of our stuff. Yeah, chalice on one. I mean, I think we're, I think we're mostly on the den of the bugbear plan. Pass the tur. Cause I think we can cover the creatures hopefully with these ratchet bombs. Opponent untaps. Another whack. 
but it gets countered. Oh, I guess we <laughs> we stop that whack either way, don't we? And now we blow a ratchet bomb, kill the dorks, drop to 11 from the ping, and then, oh, the opponent scoops it up. hi yi 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 All right, well, I mean, it worked that game. I do love the 12 whack deck, but we just managed to get a lot of removal. And one of the downsides, I will say, uh, be careful with the Dragon's Claws. They're really helpful if you're playing against like Burn or something. But in this matchup, we're not really pressuring life totals that much. Uh, it's not like we're some aggro deck or some burn deck. So I think that in this matchup, if you're playing 12 whack, I wouldn't bring in the Dragon's Claws. Like, because they're dead draws. Like in this matchup, I think our opponent's uh, best bet is just to try to kill us quickly before we get chalices and before we start hammer timing and so forth. So I think that's our best bet is to be as aggressive as possible. These, while they're great against burn, necessary evil against burn or whatever, super aggressive decks, uh, they just, they don't apply any pressure. Like imagine if these were even random one drops or wax or something, this game might've went a lot differently, but instead our opponent drew the dragon's claws and yeah. Gave us enough time to get things set up, but well, we'll take it. We'll take it, we'll take it. <laughs> sweet, sweet, sweet. Much brew about nothing time. We are playing some not that hammer time. We're gonna keep this. We got a monkey. Got a monkey, got some removal. We're up against dragon fodder. Hmm. Red deck makes sense. Bobble, but no Luris. Interesting. Double bobble. Usually when you see a bobble, there's a Luris involved. What is our opponent playing? Takes a peek, cracks the fetch. Stomping grounds. Wow, this is, oh, these are all Luris cards, but there's no Luris. Interesting. Mm, bobble draws a card. Oh, wait, hang on. Takes peak. We draw. Yeah, we'll see some Pyromancer is good. Play the land. Not really much of a point in playing, in playing a uh, Ragavan with the Seal of Fire out. We'll play our own Seal of Fire past the turn. Opponent draws a guard. And Barbies here wants to, uh, want some treats. You want some treats, buddy? Opponents, wow, Seal of Fire Wars. Seal of fire. <laughs> and uh, I guess we pass the turn. I mean, I think our plan is going to be to discard the Ragavan to discard the Ragavan to uh, season Pyromancer since it's definitely getting sniped. Opponent forest. It's a lot of burn on the table. I mean, I guess we could also dash the rock. Oh, Barbie, you're getting on my headset. What are you doing, bud? Barbie, are you going to ruin this video? Are you going to ruin this video, bud? Is that your plan? What is there a treat on my microphone? Yeah, you want to come say hi to people? Come here. Come say hi. Come here. There you go. There you go, big boy. Can you say hi? Say hi. Hi, everyone. You can eat a treat in the microphone so they can hear what it sounds like. Big boy bear. Okay, that's enough. Now we got to win. All right, so there's your uh, there's your bear for the week. Um, Do we dash Ragavan? Probably. It's dying either way, so we might as well. And then we're up a seal of fire. Attack you. I mean, I think whoever has the most seal of fire is... Oh, okay. Opponent. Going to keep their seal of fires. Does not want to fall behind in the in the seal of fire war. Okay, okay. I can see that. Brush fire elemental. Stomping grounds. Well, okay, we will spend a seal of fire. You ate them all, bud. You ate all the treats. Now you gotta wait. Now you gotta wait till I finish this match. Brush fire down. So opponent's like a landfall deck by the looks. Opponent passes. We draw a spike field hazard. That's my headset. You ate them all. Here, here, there, I found one. But you don't like that kind. Please like it. No, you don't like the flavor. Hmm, <laughs> bear bee. Bear's a, bear's a picky eater. Here you go, ready? Go get the treat. I got this, uh, there's like mixed packs of treats that have three different flavors and there's one flavor he just refuses to, uh, to eat. I guess we season Pyromancer. I think we just discard the MDFCs to make tokens. Discard Shatter Skull, Spike Field. Now play the land. I guess we just pass. These Seal of Fires do really stop us from attacking with Den of the Bugbear. This is gonna be interesting because I feel like we should be able to win the long game against our opponent's deck. Hopefully, I mean, I'm not exactly sure what our opponent's doing, but I, I think we're probably favored if the game goes long. Monastery, Schwiffspia. Opponent goes to combat, attacks. Block, block, block? Let's see what our opponent does. Uh, cracks a Seal of Fire, sure. Cracks a Seal of Fire. Do we need to bolt? It would be nice to keep the token. They'd have to have two spells. You know what? I think we do it. Bolt the Swift Spear. Seal of Fire is too risky because then one spell's a blowout. But Lightning Bolt, our opponent's got to be able to cast two spells. All right. The Elemental lives. 
Play the land, go to combat. We could try to fire up Den of the Bugbear, but seems a little risky, especially since we can get back Season Pyromancer here, which seems pretty good. Opponent goes to 14, untaps. Drawing a lot more lands in our opponent. Now we even discarded two lands. I guess we're drawing more cards though. Opponent, tap land, passing. Well, Season Pyromancer, make a couple dorks. A hammer would actually be pretty nice. In that case, play Relic of Progenitus. Go to combat, hit our opponent for one, or for three, rather, down to 11. Do we want a token or do we want a damage or a land? Uh, let's just, you know what? Well, the token's probably better, actually. All right, uh, Season Pyromancer. This card make a token, draw. Well, Blood Moon is, might do something. Yeah, pass the turn. We can also crack this relic at some point. All right, we're gonna do it now. While nothing good is in the grip. Okay, chaining together season pyromancers is uh, is nice. That is pretty nice. And we still got the seal of fire, the most important thing in this matchup, <laughs> apparently, for some reason. Ren, well, Ren is pretty good at sniping our dorks. Although he can seal a fire it. Ah, uh, just ticks up, sure. And monkey, boon it, passing. Kill the monkey, untap. Dash the monkey, go to combat. Opponent's only got one card. Everything at Ren, Ragavan at our opponent. Oh, it just works? Okay, okay, okay. Treasure in a bolt, we will bolt your face. And then, season pyromancer? Discard monkey blood moon, pass the turn. And I feel like we're actually in pretty good shape here. I mean, opponent's only got one card. We have a way bigger board. Opponent needs something pretty good and scoops it up. I mean, not bad, not bad. Still not sure what our opponent's doing exactly. What do we want against this deck? So graveyard heat doesn't seem like it really does anything. I guess it gets ran a little bit. So there's some sort of like landfall aggro deck. We got a lot of removal, which is nice. I don't know what our best sideboard option is. What would make them not be a Ragavan deck or not be a Lurus deck? I mean, I guess maybe just mana. Now let's try Ratchet Bombs. Chalice is fine, but Chalice is like also punishing for our deck. Well, opponent's on the play. Show us some cheap removal. We still gotta, we still gotta hammer someone eventually. Hammers have done a bit, like they're not bad. And it is like, if the game goes really long, it is a way we can finish, oh boy, I kinda like this hand. If the game goes long, it is a way we can, can win. Okay, this hand's actually sweet. Gonna need some lands, but I mean, we got the removal spell to not get monkeyed. Opponent, Scalding Tarn, cracks it. Mountain. Dragon Rage Shanala, play the Den of the Bugbear, Seal of Fire, kill Dragon Rage Channeler, pass the turn. Don't monkey us, please. Opponent, Forest, and hey, opponent's ratchet bombing too. Well, blast zone, and we will see your ratchet bomb with a ratchet. <laughs> we got a lot of similar cards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ratchet bomb, go, opponent. I'm hopeful that these Chandras will be good. Ren and six. Ren and six is good. I mean, I guess we can ratchet bomb it eventually if we have to. Well, charge up the ratchet bomb. Pony gets back a land. Yup. Plays the land. Cracks the land. Mountain. And Rift Bolt. Okay. Well, let's Reckless Impulse draw a couple cards. Yeah, Shatter Skull tapped. Pass the turn. Well, there's the hammer. This is a turn where we could get hit by a by a monkey. I kind of feel like we're gonna have to to ratchet bomb away the wren. We'll see. Opponent bolts us. Blood Moon's looking pretty bad. We might cut Blood Moons for next game, all of them. Opponent. Swift Sphere. Okay. And a land. And a scalding tarn. And more ratchet bombs. All right. Well, I mean, I think we just. Well, this is gonna actually work out super well, I think. So we get hit by the swift spear, sure. Down to 15. But we get to charge up the ratchet bomb, untap, blast zone, hammer the swift spear. Oh no! I clicked the wrong hammer. Oops. <laughs> well. <laughs> Uh, okay, you can yell a little bit for that. That is slightly yell worthy. Yeah, I definitely intended to cast the one from exile, but did not do that. Well, stop on our opponent's upkeep. Not a huge deal, but it is a bit of a deal. Upkeep. 
I mean, opponents got a land and an unknown in hand. That's not a ton. It's a stomping grounds. We will crack the ratchet bomb, which kind of insane here. Gets two ratchet bombs and the ren. Yeah, that was a that was a really good ratchet bomb. All right, no monkey snowball, please. Opponent untapped. So we would still like to just draw land. Another red source would be sweet. Another red source lets us Chandra Bolt. Mountain Spike Field Hazard. Okay. Uh well, play it as a land. Play a Chandra. I mean, Chandra killing Dragon Rage Chandler is still pretty good. Kill it. All right, opponent kills a Chandra, but they're out of cards. And I think we're in pretty good shape. I mean, we got a Chandra left over and a Season Pyromancer and a Lightning Bolt. Opponent has nothing. Just a land. All right, opponent passes. Well, one, two, three, and four. Chandra, take it up for mana. Season Pyromancer and pass the turn and now we're pretty far ahead about it swift spear sure 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 passes well i mean chandra the swift spear reckless impulse mountain go to combat hit ya and yeah pass the turn i mean i guess we spike field something this says monkey protection for the turn opponent cracks and i think we got there i think the comeback's on Ooh, scavenging is. All right, scavenging is actually kind of good. One creature, two creature. Yeah, okay. Well, that's fine. We're gonna be able to kill it. Probably gonna have to use Chandra, but... So I get rid of the hammer, which makes sense. Let's just charge up Blast Zone. We got plenty of lands. And then the Blast Zone can kill the ooze. And then I guess we just spike field your face? <laughs> down, to, down to 11. And this way we don't have to legend rule our own Chandras. Yeah, opponent gonna gain some life. All right, so we untap. We sack the blast zone, kill the ooze. And now I think we can get in with the den of the bugbear too. Yeah, opponent gonna crack. Are they actually gonna shock themselves to eat something? Wow, isn't that spending two life to gain one life? I don't know about that math. Something's a little bit off with that math. Or maybe our opponent's just kind of giving up at this point. Uh, well, play Sinka, take up Chandra for mana. Den of the bugbear, hit you with everything. Mega token. Well, it goes to one and I mean, that should do it. That should do it. Wow. Opponent finds it under the bugbear, gives us the GG's, and whew, we end up with the three and two after a sketchy start. We started off 0 and two, and then we reeled off three in a row, which means we get a treasure chest to open. Treasure chest will be open. Only one of them, but still. All right, treasure chest. One of one. Megalodoth. No, mega, Megalodoth. Six mana, six, six, vigil, travel when it blocks a creature deals damage to that creature's controller equal to its power. I mean, that's not horrible. I don't think I've ever seen this card played though. Ever, ever, ever anywhere. And some playboys. Well, all right, that was, that was a comeback. That was an interesting comeback. We started off super sketchy in this league and then we started winning and we got to see what the deck can do. Like it is kind of a neat take on Mono Red Prison. I've been, excuse me, I've been dying for a Mono Red Prison deck ever since uh, Simeon Spear Guide got banned. This one's kind of a weird take on it because uh, the the stuff I associate most with Mono Red Prison outside of like the Chandras and the Blood Moons is in the sideboard, but it kind of worked. And even our losses, like they were really close. And the one, oh my God, with our opponent monkeying Chandra's two matches in a row to close out the game was super brutal. But the deck's interesting. Uh, and I mean, Bogart and Hammer is a cool card, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. We can talk about that in the wrap up. Be right back. So what did we learn this week about Hammer Time, the Bogart did one in Modern? And overall, our league was interesting. So we start off really bad. We went 0-2, was feeling pretty down about the deck, like it maybe wasn't very good. But then all of a sudden we turned the corner and reeled off three wins in a row without dropping a game along the way. So we actually ended up with a 3-2 after our 0-2 start. Uh, the deck is really interesting. Uh, I think this deck is designed to beat Ragavan decks. Like if you look at our main deck, Seal of Fire, Spike Field Hazard, Lightning Bolt, early game blockers, we have like a million cards, Hammer of Bogardin, uh, even though it's a little slow there, but still it could kill a Ragavan. We have like a million cards that seem to be good against decks playing a bunch of little creatures. Uh, oddly, we we still got steamrolled by a Ragavan. Our opponent was able to snowball it and kill our stuff and get the blockers out of the way. We didn't hit a removal spell. So that was one of the matchups we lost, which was weird because I feel like this main deck is designed to be good against the Ragavan and other decks playing a bunch of cheap little creatures. And it didn't actually work out that way. On the other hand, I mean, we got to 
see the power of the deck. We got to see Blood Moon just absolutely wrecking Amulet Titan. I think Blood Moon's in a pretty good spot in Modern right now. Thanks to all the Urza Sagas running around. Like, Blood Moon is just such a good answer to Urza Saga. So even in matchups where maybe it traditionally would be bad, it still gets some value because you got these decks that are just randomly playing Saga for value. So that, I think, is one of the upsides of the deck. But really, our removal came through. We saw against, like, Gruul and against the 12 whack deck that we just have so much removal. We just kind of, like, kill all of our opponent's stuff. Eventually, we're getting hammers back from the graveyards and finding our Chandras to close out the game. As someone who loves Mono Red Prison, it kind of pains me to see the prison pieces mostly in the sideboard. Like, sure, we got the Blood Moon in the main deck, but our Chalices and our Ensnaring Bridges. And throughout the league, I kind of went back and forth. Like, oh, would we rather have these in the main deck? We'd probably have to change up our, uh, our card selection a little bit because you can't play a bunch of Lightning Bolts and Seal of Fires and a Chalice of Void deck, really, because you want to put Chalice on one in some matchups. Like, how does that work? Can you play Ragavan with Ensnaring Bridges? Is that too non bowie So there's a lot of, like, weird things going on in the deck. Uh, but I like how it turned out. We have really powerful sideboard options for a lot of matchups. In the main deck, why it looks a little bit janky, it actually seems to line up pretty well with a lot of the big decks in the meta. As far as Hammer at Bogart in itself, I'm still not sure what to think of the card. Like, it is a sweet finisher when we have the prison setup going. Like, once we get things locked in with a Blood Moon or after sideboarding an Ensnaring Bridge or a Chalice of the Void, then it becomes insane. Like, if we just have unlimited time to kill our opponent, Hammer Bogarden does get the job done and it doesn't care about Ensnaring Bridge and it doesn't care about Chalice of the Void or any of the other hate cards. Like, sure, eight mana for three damage is not efficient, not even a little bit efficient, but it is repeatable. It is gonna get the job done eventually so i liked it there on the other hand when you got to use it in the early game to try to kill something it's pretty slow we saw that against the ragavan deck if i'm remembering right that we had a hammer in hand but it's like oh great like we can kill ragavan after it hits us three times like uh, that's just so much time for our opponent to beat us down with their cheap stuff uh, i do think you probably shouldn't cut it you saw that in some of our earlier matchups like oh i don't know maybe we can cut a couple hammers maybe we can cut all the hammers they don't feel that great in this matchup but without hammer we're kind of light on ways to finish the game. We're really leaning on just Chandra for the most part, along with very random, unlikely to work beats. Uh, so I feel like you really got to keep the hammers in the deck because once you get the game locked up, they do become really good. So I don't think Bogart and Hammer Time is quite as good as traditional Hammer Time, but it was better than I expected it to be. And it warms my heart to have something similar to Free Win Red, Mono Red Prison. It's been a long time, ever since Simeon Spirit Guide has been banned. Uh, the Blood Moon archetype, of mono red blood moon you know janky out with these lock pieces it just hasn't been very good but it seems like maybe thanks to hammer of Ogerden, of all things in this really wonky brew that maybe just maybe it's back so that is hammer time bogerton style that's been our bunch of brew for this week thanks for watching i hope y'all enjoyed it and i will talk to you soon thanks for watching the video if you enjoyed it help us out by clicking that like button down below and to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here. Okay, that's enough. Now we gotta win.